Hello and welcome to a Wattstopper product overview. My name is Camille LaRose and today I will go in details on the DW311 and PW311. What are these devices? They are line voltage motion sensors and 0 10 volt dimmers all in one. With the arrival of LED fixtures, soon many of those fixtures came standard with 0 10 volt dimming. This was great because it lowered the cost of adding dimming into a space. However, it increased the complexity of wiring motion sensors and dimmers together. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here in an all low voltage installation, we could have a wall switch motion sensor right beside a 0 10 volt dimmer, both connected to a power pack. There would be many low voltage wires to connect, therefore increasing the risk of miswiring and troubleshooting. In this case here, install a low voltage dual technology ceiling sensor with a low voltage 0 10 volt dimmer connected to a power pack. For the same space size as the previous example, it would increase the cost as the ceiling sensor is more expensive. Wiring these devices together would also be complex as you still have the same amount of wires to connect. In line voltage installations where a line voltage motion sensor will only control the lights as on and off, the 0 10 volt dimmer will be a low voltage device. They are usually installed in separate electrical boxes which might not be aesthetically pleasing. If the application is 347 volt, this is even more true as the electrical box is larger and longer, therefore the plate is bigger for the motion sensor. So good news for the Canadian market, these dimming motion sensors are available in 347 volt. Now that line voltage 0 10 volt dimmers exist, a line voltage motion sensor would be installed up on the ceiling, feeding power to the dimmer. Although this might be an economical way of doing an installation, in regions or buildings where an energy code is enforced, this installation would not comply. Also note that this installation would not be possible at 347 volt since a line voltage 0 10 volt dimmer at 347 volt is not available in the market. When looking at the design of the DW311 and PW311, we wanted to follow the aesthetic path of our existing offering. If you are familiar with our current on-off wall switch sensors in a 1 or 2 loads, you'll notice that our 0 10 volt dimming motion sensors look just like them. This creates linearity on a project where you might have the combination of switching and dimming spaces in a building. The DW311 and PW311 were built with the consideration that if an energy code was enforced in a region, or if it was to be installed in a lead project, that they would be capable to perform to those requirements. There are many features built into the devices, which you'll discover as we dig in further. The user experience is important at Wattstopper, so we've made sure that the users would find the devices intuitive and easy to use. The electrical contractor will find them easy to install, and if the default settings need to be modified, they will discover that they are simple to change. Let's look at the sensor's coverage. On the left is the dual technology passive infrared and ultrasonic DW311, and on the right, the passive infrared only PW311. You will notice that the coverage is defined in two zones, minor motion and major motion. When considering using or placing these sensors, it is best practice to have them close to the occupants or within the minor motion detection area. This will be important when the application is in an office space with sitting occupants. Since more and more occupants work with multiple monitors, the dual technology sensor might be your preferred choice. The sensors are tested to the NEMA guide publication WD7-2000, which ensures the highest quality of detection. Here's a quick view of the wiring diagram. The motion sensors come with colored wires, which are easily identifiable. Note that for the PW311, the neutral connection is optional. You will notice a yellow wire, but in a single pole application, it isn't used. However, it is used for three-way applications. The good news is, these motion sensors can be used in multi-way applications. You can turn the lights on or off and dim at all locations. For the occupant, this will be very easy to operate. If the motion sensor was set to manual on, they will tap once to turn the lights on, press and hold in order to dim up. If the sensor was set to auto on, then press and hold to raise the light level. 
The button on the right will function the same way. Tap once to turn off the lights, press and hold to lower the light level. There is a red and green LED which will blink every time it detects motion. They are also used in advanced programming, which I will explain in a minute. When the default settings need to be changed, the up button and down button need to be removed. To achieve this, you would simply pull them from the top. Note that with a small flat screwdriver, you can pull them out without removing the cover plate. This will give you access to the dip switches behind those buttons. Now let's take a look at all of the available settings. There are 9 dip switches and let's review them. Note that in bold are the default settings. Dip switch number 1 is for manual and auto on mode. Dip switch 2 and 3 are for the time delays varying from test 3 minutes to 30 minutes. Dip switch 4 and 5 are for the trigger mode or in other words, how the motion sensor is to detect motion upon initial occupancy, maintain occupancy and re-trigger. Dip switches 6, 7, 8 and 9 are for additional features. This is where the LEDs in front of the motion sensor will become useful in order to track which setting you have selected. I am not going to elaborate on all of the settings, but I would like to emphasize the preset on level. By default, the setting is set to last non-zero value. This means that if you leave the lights dimmed at a certain level, let's say 85%, the next time you come into space on either auto on or manual on mode, the level will be 85%. Now, if you wanted to have this room come on automatically and comply to your local energy code or for a lead project, you would have to change two things. One, change the preset on level to the second option, 50%, and change dip switch number one to auto on. The new sequence of operation would be, when the occupant walks in the room, the lights would turn on automatically to 50%. They would still have the ability to change the light level manually, but, as an example, if they left it at 100%, when the sensor would time out, the next time they would come in, the lights would come on again at 50%. This concludes the product overview of the DW311 and PW311. If you want more information on these dimming motion sensors, please follow the instructions at the bottom left of your screen or contact your local Wattstopper representative. Also, under Cut Sheet is where you will find the ordering information. Thank you for watching.